Welcome back. At this point, we've completely configured our schematic. The schematic will define all of the firmware that will run inside of our project. Remember, there's two things going on. There will be a CapSense slider and there will be a red LED. The CapSense slider will be able to talk to the Android app. The red LED, you'll be able to turn on and off with the switch on the screen. So now we need to configure the BLE component so that it's got those two characteristics in it. We'll start by double clicking the BLE. Now that we've got the BLE customizer open, I need to configure the profile. This is gonna to be totally custom. So I'll select custom. The device will act as a GAT server and the GAP role will be peripheral. GAT and GAP are the two most important concepts in understanding this whole system. You can think of GAP as the way two devices get connected together. The Android will serve as the GAP central and the BLE device will serve as the GAP peripheral. The GAP central will talk to the GAP peripheral. The GAP peripheral will advertise that it's around and the GAP central will hear that it's around and make the connection. I'll show you how to do that in a future video. As I said, GAP is how devices connect, and GATT, G-A-T-T, -T, is how devices trade information. This board, which you're going to configure, will run a GATT server. Remember, a GATT server is just a database that runs inside of the firmware on the PSOC 4, and it remembers information that the GATT client, which is running on the Android phone, will be able to grab information out of. It can read and write from the GAT database that's inside of your GAT server. At this point, we have the generic configuration done for the BLE component. The next thing that we need to do is customize the profiles. This is essentially setting up the GAT database so that the Android phone will be able to read data out of it. PSOC Creator gives you a custom service to start from, though I'm gonna start by deleting this service and I'm gonna create my own service. So I'll go to the server, I'll need to add a custom service. I'm going to create a service that has two characteristics in it. One characteristic will be for the LED and the other characteristic will be for CapSense. Those two characteristics are gonna be grouped together into a custom service. That service is going to be called the LED CapSense service, and it will have its own unique identifier. Those unique identifiers are called universally unique identifiers. The UUID we're going to tell the Android phone app so that it will be able to find devices that have that service. First, I'll change the name of the service. I'm going to call it LED CapSense. This is going to give the ability inside of my firmware to talk to that specific service. Then I'm gonna take the first characteristic, which Creator calls custom characteristic, and I'm gonna change the name. And the name of this characteristic, as I discussed earlier, is going to be LED. That characteristic is going to represent the state of the LED. This characteristic needs to be able to be read and written remotely, so I'll enable the write flag and I'll enable the read flag. I'm not going to use the custom descriptor, so I'll just delete it. The next thing I need is the CapSense characteristic. So I'll add another custom characteristic. Just like before, I'll rename it so that I have sensible names in my APIs. This characteristic, for some reason, oh yeah, because I call it CapSense, I'm going to call it CapSense. This characteristic is not going to be writable remotely. That doesn't make any sense. You'll only be able to read it. So I'm gonna click the read button. The other thing that's interesting and that you'd like to be able to do on the other side would be to be notified when things change. In order to be notified, you have to click the notify flag and that will create another special characteristic called the client characteristic configuration descriptor. And yes, that's a mouthful. It took me five takes on this video to say that correctly. So I like to rename that. I'm going to rename that crazy thing to CapSense CCCD. Now, 
I'm not, once again, going to use the custom descriptor, so I'll just delete it and get it out of the way. When you're looking at this thing remotely from a GAT browser, like the one built into CY Smart, one of the nice things to be able to do is to find a human readable form, a name for the characteristic. In order to do that, you add a special descriptor called the characteristic user description. I'm going to add that to the LED and I'm going to type in something sensible. In this case, I'm typing LED UINT 8. So on the remote side, you'll be able to see the name of this characteristic and you'll have a human readable information, which should make sense to you. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing for CapSense by adding a characteristic user description for it as well. I'll call this one CapSense UINT 16. On the remote side, I'll know that gives me an unsigned int 16 in human readable form. The next thing that needs to be configured, and I should have configured it originally, I should have set the type of the CapSense service. Let's see here. It needs to be a uint 16. The default is uint 8. All right, now I've got that fixed. This is good. So we've got the LED set up. It's a uint 8. It has a characteristic user description, which is human readable. Okay, that's good. We've got the CapSense characteristic, which is uint 16. That's two bytes in length. Okay, that's good. It has the CCCD, remember, client characteristic configuration descriptor. And the last thing is to have a characteristic user description called CapSense uint 16. All right, now I have one more thing to do. Each of these things needs to have a specific 128-bit UUID. This is so the other side, the Android phone side, will be able to identify each of the characteristics in the service. Creator gives it a default, and just for grins, I'm going to make it say the same thing. Blah, 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 zero. The LED characteristic is going to be blah, 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 one. And the CapSense characteristic will be blah, 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 two. At this point, we set up the general information for the component, its custom profile. I've made its custom profile. It's a GAT server. In other words, it's running the database. And it's a GAT peripheral, which means that the central can attach to it. I've set up the profile. I've created the custom service. It's got two custom characteristics. That's all configured. Let's see here. The last thing I need to do is I need to set the gap settings. Inside of the gap settings tab, there's a couple of things I want to do. First of all, I want to give the device a name. So I'm going to call it cap LED. Then I need to set up the advertising settings. For this setup, I'm just going to advertise all of the time. So I'll turn off the advertising timeout switch. This device, you want to be able to connect to it. I'll advertise all the time when it's not connected. The last thing I'm going to do inside of the advertising packet that's being sent out every 20 to 30 milliseconds, I want to put some information into it so the other side can easily identify us. The first thing I'm going to do is put in the name that I just gave it. That will be accessible inside of all of the advertising packets that are coming out every 20 to 30 milliseconds. It will show up on the remote side as something identifiable. I'll be able to read its name easily. The last thing I want to do is I want it to advertise the service that it has available. On the Android phone side, I'm only going to look for devices that match this specific service. When I get the advertising packets on the Android side, I'm only going to match packets that have the right service. At this point, the schematic is completely created. We've got the BLE set up. We've got the CapSense set up. We've got the blinking LED, which will indicate the state. We've got the red LED set up. Now you need to configure your pins. So go to the Design Wide Resources tab, DWR. The next thing you need to do is to connect the CapSense slider to the appropriate pins on the board. In this module, that's P21 through P25. So P21, P21, 
P22P23, P24, P25. That's cool. All of those things are easy to see on the silk screen on the board. The next thing I need to do is connect the blue LED to port three, pin seven. And I need to connect the red LED to port two, pin six. All right, at this point, the pins are set up correctly. The schematic is set up. So I help myself here in a minute with the firmware. I'm gonna go ahead and do a generate application. This will create all of the APIs so that they will be known by creator which ones you're going to use, and that'll simplify the firmware development. Now that the application is generated, go ahead and go to the next lesson. And in the next lesson, I'm gonna take you through creating the firmware.